He's the best there is at what he does, and what he does is be part of some great stories. But where to begin? Today, we're going to be talking about where to start reading Wolverine in graphic novel format, so stay tuned. And welcome back to the Where to Begin Reading segment, where I talk about where to start reading some of the characters in Marvel and DC, and I'll probably do some independent comics too. Um, that are featured in movies and TV shows and video games or you've just been curious to read about for a long time. Today I'm going to be focusing on my favorite comic book character of all time and that is Wolverine, Weapon X, Logan. He's gone by so many names. He's been around for decades. And one of the questions that I get often is where is a good jumping on point for new readers? Where is a good place to start for this particular character? Now I could have done a where to start reading X-Men, but that will come, of course. And if you're curious about this particular segment, there is a playlist. It's a beginner's comic guide playlist where I talk about the different formats of collected editions as well as this right here, the where to begin or where to start. So let's go ahead and get started. We got a lot to talk about. And at the very end, I put alternate realities too, like where you can read about the character that isn't featured in the 616 universe. Because for the most part for Marvel Comics, I stick to the 616 universe, and that means everything is canon. Since his first appearance, all of this has happened. Unlike DC that reboots the universe from time to time, Marvel has been one long story since these characters first appeared. So from 1974 up until now, that's what the 616 is known as. Uh, and then, like I said, I'll talk about alternate realities. So let's go ahead and get started. And now Wolverine. So, 1974, there was this character that broke out in the pages of Incredible Hulk 181. He was just known as the Wolverine, created by Len Wein, Herb Trempe, Roy Thomas, and John Ramita. Uncanny Omar Talk Pretty One Day, John Ramita. This character, nobody really knew what he, he was going to be doing in a year. Like, nobody knew this character was going to blow up, but he appeared as kind of an arch nemesis to the Incredible Hulk uh, while he was fighting the Wendigo. Yeah, you never really saw him unmask, and you don't really see him develop until a little bit later. But this is for the people that are completists that want to read about Wolverine from the very beginning. Don't even need this video because they're like, I want to know where I can start reading the character from the beginning, and I'll take it from there. Now, this particular story has been reprinted several times, but you're going to find it in the Wolverine Omnibus Volume 1 if you like the big omnibus formats. Uh, they're going to be available in epic format when the Incredible Hulk epics get there. It's been available in trade paperback formats many trade paperback formats so but i think the most economical way to get it is the wolverine omnibus volume one because there's several stories i'm going to be talking about on this list that are in that omnibus so remember when i said the character wasn't really filled out like the he was just kind of a one-off character well fast forward a year later with len ween now teaming up with dave cockerham to relaunch x-men with giant size x-men number one now, we have Dave Cockrum to thank for the way that Wolverine is drawn these days because he took John Romita's concept and accidentally drew the mask the wrong way. He kind of gave it a Batman mask. And ever since then, every artist has drawn Wolverine in that style. So, Dave Cockrum, rest in peace. Thank you so much for that. And, and all the other wonderful things that he created in X-Men. Now, he is part of this team, but he's kind of a background character. But this is if for people that want to start reading X-Men uh, and want to know how Wolverine is in a team, we'll say that he isn't like your leading man. As a matter of fact, it was a, a toss-up between him and another character, I'm sure, at the time, who they were going to kill off during X-Men 95. Now, it's not until this next story arc when Chris Claremont comes on board. So, I'm talking about the Dark Phoenix saga. So, Chris Claremont... John Byrne, and at first Dave Cockrum helped really flesh out this character. They, you know, for the first time he's called Logan in the pages of Uncanny X-Men. Of course, he's called Logan by a leprechaun. But in this particular story, this is where you're going to see that feral side of Wolverine, that beast, that berserker that just rages inside of him. And the first time you see him cut loose in issue 133 of the Dark Phoenix saga when he's just him rolling solo up against the hellion mill like just a bunch of minions so he's just hacking and slashing away at these guys and you see this brutality inside of this man and i thought this is a great way uh to introduce people to probably the character they're a little more familiar with from the movies uh just because you know i think hugh jackman portrays that berserker side of him so damn well 
But this particular story, of course, collected in the Omnibus Edition Volume 1 and Volume 2. So as well as Giant Size Number 1 that is collected in um, Omnibus format. Both of these uh, stories that I'm talking about, whether it's Giant Size or the Dark Phoenix Saga, are also collected in Epic format in Trade Paperback Editions and in uh, Marvel Premiere Editions. And there's actually a Dark Phoenix uh, omnibus that's being rebranded as a Phoenix Omnibus Volume 1 coming out later this year if you just want to read the Phoenix Saga. Now in 1982 Chris Claremont teamed up with Frank Miller to tell this story and that is Wolverine. He had a four issue miniseries uh, this again being collected in the Wolverine Omnibus that said that would come back but it's also been collected in Marvel Premiere hardcovers uh, in trade paperback editions and in the X-Men Omnibus Volume 2. Because it leads into part of the From the Ashes storyline. But this four issue miniseries just shows Wolverine rolling solo, falling in love with this Japanese lady named Mariko. So he is traveling to Japan where he also gets to fight off the hand. There's some gorgeous artwork in here from Frank Miller. And it's the first time you get to see Wolverine just be his own. He's without the X Men. You feel like this almost feels like it's a standalone story that you don't need the rest of the X-Men. As a matter of fact, this is the first time a lot of people thought, you know what, this guy could carry his own title. And I wanted to add this in here because this is one of the best stories, but it's also a great jumping on point to see this Ronin type of character that a lot of people are familiar with because of the movies or the animated show. Now, there have been several really good stories uh, for Wolverine in between the miniseries and this next book. And this one is 24 hours. So, but I wanted to talk about where to start reading the character, not best stories. Maybe I'll do another list one day for best stories. But 24 Hours, I think, really just throws it all at us. This shows the relationship of Sabretooth. This makes you ask the question, how long have these guys been alive? Because this flashback they're having was a long time ago, longer than most humans should be living. So then you start asking, you know, is this are these characters immortal? How long have they known each other? And this whole feud between Sabretooth and Wolverine really starts with this particular story. Yes, they fought in the pages of the Mutant Massacre, but even then it was hinted that the two characters knew each other for a long time, and this is the first place uh, where, you know, you see Wolverine, it's his birthday party, poor guy, something happens to his girlfriend at the time, Silver Fox, and it's all because of Sabretooth and that slice of cake. Chris Claremont, big John Buscema, just kicking all kinds of ass on this title, but I think this is the, the, the issue that really stands out to me as a standalone issue as well as a great beginner's issue. It's available in the Wolverine Omnibus again, Volume 1, in the Epic Collection. Uh, it's Matterport Knights in the Epic Collection. It's been available in trade paperback format. And of course, all these are in digital format too if you want to check them out and read them that way. Next up, we're still talking about the Wolverine solo title. Remember when I said, hey, this character's popular enough or cool enough to carry his own title? Well, it lasted a long time. Matter of fact, it's still ongoing. But this is Blood and Claws. Now, I mentioned this particular era because this is issues 34 through 46. I know most people say 35 through 46. I'm including 34 because 34 is my favorite issue and it's technically part of Blood and Claws. Now we have Larry Hama, who's the new writer on Wolverine, and Mark Silvestri, who just left X-Men to come and draw Wolverine. And... Larry Hama visits like everything that a lot of the other writers had done, but he expands on them, like the Weapon X project, which we'll see later on with the Return of Weapon X story. But this Blood and Claws reintroduces us to Lady Deathstrike. You start getting answers to the ties. How close is Wolverine to Sabretooth? What, what is it that makes them just go at each other's throat every time they see each other? And of course, more mysteries are being asked. And then Issue 34, The Hunter in the Darkness. Oh, man. One of the best standalone issues. And again, you ask the question, how long have these guys been alive? Now, this one here is in the Blood and Claws Epic Collection. I almost forgot what it's called. Of course, it's called Blood and Claws Epic Collection. It's also collected in the upcoming Wolverine Omnibus Volume 3. It's collected in the Wolverine Classics, Larry Hama, Mark Silvestri uh, trade paperback series. So it's available in many different formats. Let's go back to Uncanny X-Men and talk about Madripoor Knights, one of the best standalone issues. There's a lot of really good standalone issues, and the reason I use this one, this is from Uncanny 268, is because 
this was the issue that I would show a lot of my friends that weren't in the comics or that knew who the X-Men were. Because you have to think, back then, the re Wolverine's popularity outside of people that read comics was completely unknown. Because there were no TV shows. There were no movies back in the 80s. But this issue, I remember when it came out, I told my friends, I'm like, you need to read this. This is such a cool story. Because most of them probably recognize Captain America. And every one of them loved it. And a couple of them, and to this day, still collect comics. So this is a flashback issue where Wolverine remembers um, back during World War II in Madripoor where he teamed up with Captain America and Black Widow. And together they had this adventure. Uh, and then it's also about the present. We have Black Widow again and Captain America teaming up with Wolverine against the hand. So it goes back and forth. It's a great standalone story. It's got beautiful artwork by Jim Lee and regarded as probably one of the greatest places to start reading according to me and that's why I made it on the list available in the Uncanny X-Men by Chris Claremont and Jim Lee Omnibus Volume 1 it's available in Epic Collection it's available in trade paperback formats as well as I think they did a facsimile issue which is a reprint of the single issue of 268 Weapon X You're probably asking why didn't I kick this list off with that particular story well because I'm doing these in publishing chronological order in this book didn't come out until 1991 during the Marvel Comics Presents era. Barry Winter Smith, a veteran of art, storytelling, colors, and inks, he just comes in and says, I have a story to tell featuring this Canadian character. So for the longest time, we knew that Wolverine's bones were laced with adamantium. But how did all that happen? Well, through this big event or miniseries or actual just Marvel Comics eight page stories that were collected in trade paperback later on and it is part of the Wolverine Omnibus Volume 1. Uh, I don't think the epics have made it there yet because it wasn't in the uh, Wolverine epic one but it's been printed across the board many times Marvel Premiere trades. Um, there's a new Weapon X uh, gallery edition that's coming out too. Oh, I can't wait to see Barry Windsor Smith's oversized artwork in that but this is where you see Logan get kidnapped and experiments are done on him. And of course they choose him because of his healing factor, which is part of his mutant abilities. And you see him get tortured, you, you see him go through all sorts of brutal tests. I would say if you are uh, a animal lover, like you know, you can't stand or stomach animals being hurt on screen or in books, maybe stay away from this one because there are some cruelty towards animals in this particular story. Um, but anyway, this this is the legendary Weapon X story, and of course I'm recommend. This is truly where you see the beginning of the machine that he is. Omega Red. So following up on Weapon X, we had the return to Weapon X, but I feel like Omega Red is a better jumping on point for people that were watching the cartoon at the time. A lot of the costumes during this era, because it's all drawn by Jim Lee. Uh, were the costumes that they used for the animated show. Now, this is found in the upcoming Bishop's Crossing X-Men Epic Collection. It's also found, of course, in the X-Men by Chris Claremont and Jim Lee, Omnibus Volume 2. It's been available in many trade paperbacks, and it's just a great story with phenomenal artwork by Jim Lee and Scott Williams' Inker. Uh, this shows a similar experiment to that of Weapon X, but over in... Russia. So we get Omega Red. Uh, the hand is also involved. We get a new look for Creed, uh, Sabretooth, and it's all like modernized artwork. It There are some badass moments, but the artwork is the big selling point. I know fans of Jim Lee love this particular story, love the introduction to Omega Red, and yeah, of course I'm recommending this one. Now the Wolverine comic continued years after Omega Red, uh, as well as X-Men to this day. But the next book I'm going to be talking about is 20 years after that last book was printed, and that is Elektra and Wolverine. So this is written by Greg Rucka, but this is mainly for fans of Yoshitaka Mano, a phenomenal Japanese artist, probably most familiar here in America to people because of his character designs that he did for the Final Fantasy video games. One through six, even some of seven, have just all his artwork in it. And then, of course, Vampire Hunter D., but he has done some American comics, uh, Sandman, and this one here reads sort of like Sandman. Greg Rucka is a phenomenal writer. Uh, he comes in and does this 
story that's more like painted illustrations from Yoshitaka Mano. And it's just the story of how Electra's been hired to kill a man and ends up killing him. But all of this is witnessed by his 14-year-old daughter. So Electra kidnaps Avery, his daughter. And she learns that Avery's not your average teen. She has healing powers and fighting skills that are beyond those of normal people. Now, Wolverine has to go and rescue this girl. So don't expect your traditional comic book style with this one. This is more of a prose novel with some beautiful artwork. But I had to throw it in there. Fans of Yoshitaka Mano with Wolverine? Hell yes. Now, this has been available in deluxe edition and standard size trade paperback and hardcover edition. And no matter what, you're going to be able to find it in print. They were originally collected in three, like, uh, thick... Uh, comic book formats. New Avengers. I throw in New Avengers so often because Bendis does a phenomenal job of introducing new readers to a lot of these characters. He breaks them down to the basics and shows a lot of the readers, a lot of new readers, what is best about these characters. Now, this is, of course, Wolverine, now with Captain America, Iron Man, Spider Man, Spider Woman, uh, and Ronan, the mysterious Ronan. You know, just having different types of adventure. This is all starting in the Savage Land against Sauron, who can breathe fireballs. But besides that, this has got beautiful artwork by David Finch. So I threw this in here because they're fans of the Avengers movies. And it's just cool to see Wolverine be part of the Avengers. And it was so for the longest time with Bendis' run on New Avengers. Now in the same year, 2004, Greg Rucka teamed up with Derek Robertson to relaunch Wolverine with a brand new number one. And the next story I'm talking about is Brotherhood. So it's about this young waitress named Lucy who is in danger. And she tries to get help. She is sadly killed. So it's a revenge story. It's like Death Wish with Wolverine. He just goes berserk after all these people. It's a little more adult in the tone of the story than the previous stories outside of Weapon X. Uh, just because of the themes and the brutality. And it was awesome just to see Derek Robertson take a stab at drawing Wolverine. Now, sadly, this is also during the popularity of the movies with Hugh Jackman. So, uh, at the time, the editors told Derek Robertson to make Wolverine less ogreish and more good-looking Hollywood Hugh Jackman style. Which Derek Robertson was like, oh, that breaks my heart. Uh, because, yes, Wolverine in the comics isn't Hugh Jackman. He's not the good looking dude he is this just savage very muscular angry little man oh it's it's, it's amazing uh the differences in between hugh jackman and hugh jackman killed it in the movies don't get me wrong but wolverine in the comics is a lot different now greg rucka's run has been collected in the thinner trade paperbacks and there is a complete collection and the complete collection is out of print i think you might have better luck getting those thinner trade paperbacks hopefully one day I think we need a Greg Rucka omnibus that can include this story, Brotherhood, and Wolverine and Elektra. Enemy of the State, this is by Mark Miller and John Romita Jr. And it's pretty much the story of what if Wolverine died and was resurrected and was part of the Hand. So it's Wolverine fighting against all, this, uh, all the superheroes, all his friends, all the uh, superheroes he's teamed up with in the past. That's pretty much what this particular story is. Uh, there's a particular death in here that will eventually get retconned, but uh, I figured this is this one's just fun. It's a story about Wolverine dying and becoming a villain, and much like everything else in comics, you know, it doesn't stay. But it's fun to see him just cut loose on some of your favorite characters, like Captain America. I wanted to throw that in there because it's just easy reading going into it. You don't need to know anything about the character. You don't need to know anything about. Uh, you know, his connections with everybody else because Mark Miller does a pretty good job of saying, hey, we've been friends all this time. Why are you fighting me? Now, this is available in a deluxe hardcover edition. It's also available in the Mark Miller Wolverine Omnibus. It's been available in trade paperback format. Wolverine Origin, the story that forever changed the character of Wolverine and what you thought you knew about him. So, story is that the executives wanted to tell a story about Wolverine's past, the movie executives and they said you either write one or we're gonna make up our own story so marvel joe quesada 
teamed up with Paul Jenkins and Andy Kubert, Richard Eisenhoff, to tell the story of Wolverine's past. Now, for years, we've known the man as Logan, but is he really Logan, or was his name James? Well, you can find all of it out here. So if you want a true beginning to where the character of Wolverine originated from, look no further than Wolverine Origin. Now, I do want to stress that this is not Wolverine Origins. That was an ongoing series that was in the aftermath of House of M. This is just a six-issue miniseries that's been available in Deluxe Edition. Uh, it's been part of the Epic line. It's been collected in trade paperback formats. It's actually a damn good story. And there was a follow-up by uh, Karen Gillan with Adam Kubert on artwork. But this, this here is the one that kicks off the very, very first adventure of Wolverine as a child. Now, a couple of years after Origin, we got Brian K. Vaughn to step in and write a story with Eduardo Rizzo on artwork called Wolverine Logan. And this takes us back to Japan. Japan. It's a story that goes from present to past, so there's a lot of flashbacks. And it features the character of Wolverine, part of the World War II, prisoner of war, gets thrown in, whole with another mutant who has mutant abilities, but is also not that good of a person and wants to go on a killing rampage. However, they're caught during this Hiroshima bombing. So there's a whole feud between both of these characters. And in the present time, both of the characters are reunited and they're at each other's throats. You don't need to know anything about Wolverine at all to enjoy the story. It's got some great artwork by Eduardo Rizzo and it's Brian K. Vaughan. He does a phenomenal job of reintroducing the character to new readers. Uncanny X-Force. Now if you want to see a dark side of Wolverine, a Black Ops side of Wolverine where he's leading uh, a whole group of mutants, well look no further than Weapon X. No, I'm kidding. It's <laughs> Uncanny X-Force is just such a good title because it is a Black Ops team formed by Cyclops telling Wolverine this is the team that you're going to need because this is the team that we don't want anybody to know about. You're going to go on missions that kill other characters or mutants. You're going to go on and do things that you don't want to do that we don't want anybody to find out that we're doing behind the scenes. So Wolverine along with Archangel and Psylocke and Phantom X and Deadpool, uh, just name a few of the characters that appear in here, eventually Deathlock and couple of other characters join um, go on secret missions for the X-Men and there's a lot of should we or should we not moments in here their very first mission is to kill a child that will eventually grow up to be apocalypse so that kind of shows you the morality questions that are going to be in this particular series now there is an omnibus of this there is a tr many trade paperbacks and complete collections of this now the very first story arc is amazing it's the one that will hook you and that's the one that's drawn by jerome opeña and rick remender just killing it i i love this particular uh story and the next one is another side of wolverine a more lighter tone and that is wolverine and the x-men so if you seen wolverine playing the role of a father figure to a lot of these characters like kitty pride like jubilee like rogue like armor well this is Wolverine being the headmaster of a school and being a father figure to all these young mutants. And this is in the aftermath of Schism, where him and Cyclops have it out. During this time, Jean Grey is dead. So the school is named the Jean Grey School for Gifted Youngsters. I love that. And there's a secret to where the school is built. You got a brand new Hellfire Club. Artwork by Chris Bacciolo and... Um, Nick Bradshaw, phenomenal artist, and it's just a lot of fun to see that particular side of Wolverine. Now, Wolverine and the X-Men has been available in skinny trade paperbacks and complete collections and an omnibus that is being reprinted later on this year. Now, Wolverine still has an ongoing series, and the next place that I would suggest reading it would be The House and Powers of X, but that would be more for X-Men, because the Benjamin Percy series of Wolverine, just I don't think it's a great jumping on point for him. But let's talk about some alternate realities that are. So the very first book I'm going to be talking about is Wolverine vs. Hulk, Ultimate Wolverine vs. Hulk to be exact. So this is for people that are used to uh, a certain Wolverine that has nothing but violence and can just go completely berserk. It's got artwork by Lionel Francis Yu. It's written by Dame, uh, Damien Lindelof. 
of Lost fame at the time, and the book freaking took forever to come out. It was only four issues, but it took a couple of years for it to come out, and it's been available in um, Marvel Premiere hardcover and in trade paperback format. If you want to see Wolverine just get ripped to shreds and then come back to fight, like this, this is a this is a fun book. Next up is Wolverine Season 1. This is Marvel's reimagining of the series that is in canon. It's set in an alternate reality, but here you see a revisioning of not just Wolverine, but also the Wendigo uh, and Sabretooth, and then his ties to Alpha Flight. And I wanted to throw that in here because this is really just a recap of everything that makes Wolverine who he is. Wolverine Noir. Now, this was another interesting thing that... Marvel did was make a lot of the characters noirish, like Spider-Man Noir, which you saw in the Spider-Verse movie. But this is the story of Detective Jim Logan. Uh, that's his name. Uh, Jim Logan, who is a detective in 1937 along with his brother, and he has this past that he has to revisit uh, with Mariko, which is his love interest. So this is a side of Wolverine that you never really get to see. It's a detective type of story. But I think even Greg Rucka did it a little bit better in the Brotherhood storyline. But it, this is for fans of that noir style. Wolverine Snicked by Sutomo Nihei. This is for fans of manga because this is the same manga card that did Blame, Bio Omega, Knights of Sidonia. And it's Wolverine out there in the Deadlands. This feels a little bit like Mad Max, but it's got some phenomenal artwork in there. And yes, if you're a fan of manga and have ever wanted to check out Wolverine, this is the book for you. The next book, of course, last but not least, is Old Man Logan. This was originally published in Wolverine Volume 3 as part of the ongoing series, but it's still an alternate reality. Much like things like Days of Future Past are an alternate reality. It's not set in stone that this is the future for Wolverine. The movie is loosely based on this, and I mean very loosely. It's, this is written by Mark Miller, and it is drawn by Steve McNiven. So it's less like the movie and more like Unforgiven in Lone Wolf and Cub. That's what this feels like in this alternate future where the Hulk family owns the farm where Wolverine and his family reside. He just goes by Logan these days. He gave up being a superhero years ago before all of this future started because you'll find out through the pages in here. But I think it's just a really fun, quick story to read and really showcases who Wolverine is, even though it's an alternate old man version of him. Now, the series did continue in an ongoing series and then a follow-up with Dead Man Logan, but I think to get the gist of it, I think the best jumping on point is to get Old Man Logan. Now, the book has been available in trade paperback format, a deluxe hardcover edition, and it's also part of the Wolverine Mark Miller omnibus that is currently out of print. But for the books that are still in print, check out our sponsors. If you live in Europe and are interested in pre-ordering or purchasing Omnis, then you should definitely check out Walt's Comic Shop in Berlin, Germany. They have the cheapest pre-order prices for Marvel and DC big books within the EU, flat shipping of 990 euro for EU countries, extremely careful and sturdy packaging, emails are answered within 24 hours, and they have a superb selection of new releases and out-of-print books on their website. Just head over to waltzcomicshop.com for more great deals and rare titles. And for a limited time, you can use the code NEARMINCONDITION, all one word, at the checkout for free shipping to all EU countries with your first order. Walt's Comic Shop, your reliable source for Omnis and premium collected editions in Europe. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They pride themselves on packaging your books so they arrive safely in an excellent condition as well as prompt and helpful service. Check out the bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. CGN is excited to announce that they are now taking pre-orders. They are making it easier for you to ensure that you don't miss out on the hottest releases. CGN is currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first time customer, let them know that you were referred by near mint condition at the checkout and you'll receive a credit for free shipping on your next order this promotion is valid for u.s customers only cheap graphic novels your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount and quality shipping and customer service that will keep you coming back for more and that was my list of where to start reading wolverine weapon x logan the old knucklehead and james howlett whatever you want to call him he's the best there is of what he does and been my favorite character for well over three decades of my life and just been a part of my life for so long. So I take this list very personal. So I'd love to know what you would add on here. Please, by all means, I'm sure I forgot a couple stories. I'm like, oh, I do that every time when you all suggest things. Uh, let me know what you think of the list, what you would have taken out, what you don't agree with. 
So everybody has an opinion, and I'm more than welcome to hear it. This was the Uncanny Omar. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to smash that like button. Check out our Patreon and our spread shop. Phenomenal ways to support the channel. And thank you so much to our existing patrons. Could not be making videos like this possible without you all. And more importantly, everyone stay healthy and safe. Much love. <laughs>